Ah, thank you so much. Um, thanks for the invitation to be here. And thank you for your flexibility as I was running on Zoom meeting time this morning, I think, rather than in-person meeting time. Okay. Um, I was nine years old. I was in the back seat of the car as my mom drove us to our new home in a new town several hours away. My parents were divorcing and we were leaving the farm I was raised on. I don't remember exactly what I said, nor do I remember my mother's response. But I do remember thinking that this was the one good thing about my parents' divorce. I would not have to see him again. We would no longer be dropped off, dropped off at his house to be babysat by him and his wife. I would no longer have to hide my secret. I finally felt safe enough to tell. My story is not unique. Every 68 seconds, an American is sexually assaulted. Every nine minutes, that victim is a child. Sexual violence knows no boundaries. It happens to people across all genders, ethnicities, ages, and abilities. Additionally, people in vulnerable populations, people of color, incarcerated individuals, those with physical and developmental disabilities, and transgender folks experience sexual assault at higher rates and experience greater long-term effects. There are many reasons why victims don't tell. Self-blame and shame are two central reasons. We live in a culture that holds victims responsible for what happens to them. Conversations center on the behavior of the victim, what they should or shouldn't have been doing, wearing, or places they shouldn't have been. Sexual assault is the most intimate type of violence, leaving victims in shock, then with feelings of fear, pain, guilt, shame, and anger. They find themselves in a culture that criticizes their behaviors and excuses those of the assailant. Returning to my own story, nothing happened when I told my mom. Due to her own history of abuse that was never addressed, <clears throat> she was unable to provide me with the help I needed. At age 26, shortly after moving to the Central Coast, I finally called the local rape crisis center, which is now Lumina Alliance. It was one of the hardest things I've ever done. My sister, who was also victimized, and I both suffered various long-lasting effects from our abuse, including PTSD, drug abuse issues, and additional sexual assaults in our teens. Again, our story is not unique. 33% of 33% of victims contemplate suicide, 94% experience PTSD, and victims of sexual assault are 10 times likely, more likely to use illicit drugs. The response of the first person we tell is hugely impactful. It can be the difference between getting help and starting a healing journey, or many more years of suffering and potentially additional abuse. Recently, many of us read about the multiple sexual assaults um, that were shared by dozens of survivors on social media, right here in our happiest city in the nation. And while we at Women Alliance don't comment on specific incidents, we do want to make it clear that we as an organization believe all survivors and stand with them always. We know that sexual assault is underreported and that it can take months, years, and even decades to share your truth. We stand with all survivors, whether or not they've shared their stories, regardless of when it happened and what the circumstances. Taking a breath. You all take a breath too. This is a lot, especially at, oh, I had 7.30 in the morning written, now it's 8.30. <laughs> Um, this is a difficult thing to talk about and to think about, and it can be overwhelming, wondering how can I help? What can I do? What's my role? Well, I have some ideas. First of all, healing is possible. Victims heal and become survivors. 
sexual assault becomes a part of their story and no longer defines them. They thrive. The staff and programs at Lumina Alliance and Cal Poly Safer are here to provide that guiding light out of the darkness. So if you or someone you care about has been act impacted by sexual assault, please reach out to us. We're here for you. And you can do something. You can help create a community that supports victims and makes them feel safe to tell their story. Here are a few easy steps you can take to change the conversation. First, start by believing. Help to create a community where victims feel safe to tell their story. Tell them it's not their fault and that there's help available. And then refer them to Lumen Alliance or to the Safer Program at Cal Poly. Speak up when you see someone engaging in harmful behavior. That behavior can look like blaming victims for what happened to them, or even something as seemingly harmless as making sexist jokes. It can be scary, but something as simple as that's not okay can make a difference. Educate yourself. Check out uh, the Close to Home program at luminaalliance.org to get involved in preventing sexual violence. You can also visit redefineslow.org, an interactive website supporting parents and influential adults in teaching healthy communication and relationship skills with the youth in their lives. Sexual assault is preventable. Finally, get involved. Attend events sponsored by Lumina Alliance and SAFER. Support Lumina Alliance by donating, hosting a fundraiser, or becoming a volunteer. In closing, I would like to reiterate Kara's quote, um, who was here, I was supposed to be right after her, um, from Tarana Burke, the founder of the Me Too movement, who we were so graced to hear speak earlier in the month. Sexual assault is a community issue, and it requires a community response. Everyone has a role in making slow county safer. Thank you for listening. Thank you for taking action. Together, we can all create, create a safe, thriving, and equitable community.